Fly on into Talonflame, usually not the best matchup. However, we're running that Hail Mary. And if the opponent don't know about that rock type coverage, they're about to find out. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we have an absolute banger of a battle submission from Pyro Snow, who we're going to call Pyro for the duration of the video. He has three Pokemon, all with that 1v3 sweet potential, triple shadows, all running Hail Mary nukes. We've got a very fun ABA ground strategy. The lead and the star of the show is going to be Shadow Flygon with no Dragon Claw. Instead, opting for that rock type Hail Mary coverage of Stone Edge. Closing the show, we've got the most ruthless closer on all, Shadow Excadrill Pokemon. I've recently showcased, and we all know it has that big boom potential. Speaking of big booms, the save switch is going to be Shadow Charizard. Need I say any more than that? Without any further ado, let's get into the battle. And in game one, we see the battle of the ground types. Usually not a bad matchup when you've got Dragon Claw, as you're able to fire off the Scorching Sands and then the Dragon Claw and win the Zero Shield. However, with Twin Nukes, this isn't going to be the best we fire off the Scorching Sands. Landed for big damage, but my god, Shadow Flygon's lack of bulk on display. As you can see, that Skull did so much damage. Pyro, elects to let Flygon go down and send out Charizard, looking for that aggressive wing attack farm down. Unfortunately, we're unable to get it before the Skulls reach. Should we fire off the Dragon Claw on the CMP tie? The opponent invests that Protect Shield, and this is going to be the easiest shield of Pyro's GBL career. The opponent looking to exchange shields, and that is not the best tactic when we've got such heavy hitting Pokemon. Out comes Dubwall. Pyro massively over farms, and he's full sending the Blast Burn. Does the opponent respect the damage? They do not get that Dubwall off my screen. Out comes Gligar, and again, there is no base in. Does the opponent respect the damage? They do not, and just like that, we're off to a 1-0 start. GG's, and thanks for playing. In the next battle, we see the flying toilet in the lead. This is the first opportunity to land the unsuspecting nuke. The opponent farms up, fires off the weather ball, Flygon withstands the damage and we're just full sending. Does the opponent respect the damage? There's the first big boom. Get that toilet off my screen. The opponent sends up Clod Sire and then attempt to make a catch, but onto Reggie. Holy crap, this opponent is so weak to ground in the back. Scorching Sands lands for massive damage. We then see the pivot into Charizard Pyro. Very nicely over farms. Fires off the Dragon Claw on the CMP side. So Dragon Claw is resisted, but does secure the knockout back out. Comes Clod Sire, and this is already game over. The opponent depletes their energy, getting their own big Stone Edge boom. But we've got Excadrill, Trainer, just top left. The opponent's going to be unable to double bait and learn the Earthquake Pyro. Go straight for the drill run, of course, forcing the opponent's first Protect Shield. The opponent playing it out, wanting that work, so Pyro certainly going to give it to him. The opponent baits with the Stone Edge, but no bait. We'll be saving this opponent's fate. Pyro going to be able to shield this up, win the race to back-to-back -back charge moves, and that is going to be all she wrote. If the opponent shields the first, the second certainly will be secure on the knockout, and Pyro again picks up the emphatic dub. GG's, and thanks for playing. In the next battle, we see the Steel Penguin in the lead. This battle is normally the bait game, although we have no bait move. So we're going to fire off the Scorching Sands. Does the opponent look to call the bait? Uh-oh, trainer, you're in trouble. We get yet another big boom, and out comes Gardevoir. Pyro could have actually pivoted, as we do have two anti-charmers in the back, but instead he opts to let Flygon go down and align the Steel Mole with Gardevoir. Pyro fires off the drill run, drill run, forces the opponent's first protect shield. The opponent looking for that tap tap, charm down, farm down, but Exodrill says no, reaches the second drill run, and the opponent goes all in on Gardevoir. We now send out Charizard with a two to no shield advantage. I honestly have no idea why the opponent didn't throw a charge move, but it is what it is. Out comes Hypno, and you already know that Hypno is going to be straight in and straight out. Blast Burn gets that one hit KO, and we're going to move on to the next one. GG's, and thanks for playing. In the next battle, we need Shadow Flygon into Pelipper. There is no shot. We go two for two on Stone Edge booms, or is there? I'll be honest, if I was using Pelipper, I would not respect shit. The opponent fires off the Weather Ball, and it looks like deja vu. We're just full sending. Does the opponent respect the damage? They do not. Two for two on big booms. Out comes Annihilate. Unfortunately, we're just going to have to give the opponent some free farm as we need alignment as the Steel Mole wants no part of this Angry Ape. I believe that's seven. So this is only a Night Slash Pyro. Just looking to keep the Elf and Charizard. Shields up the Night Slash, then fires off the Dragon Claw on the CMP tie to Night Slash number two. The opponent lets go of the Ape, 
put all their hopes and dreams on the bear trap pyro. Gonna fire off the blast burn. Blast burn, of course, would be one shot into the opponent. Respects the damage. Pyro then farms up and makes a very nice catch. Catch the rock side onto the steel mole. I think that is a game-winning catch as the opponent is now going to be forced to full send an earthquake to knock out Excadrill. They could bait here, which would be a very silly bait. Pyro can now just send out Charizard, go straight Blast Burn all the way. I think baiting would be our lose con. Pyro plays to his win condition, full send of the Blast Burn. The opponent shields the first, but Charizard says there's plenty more of where that came from. We've got the Blast Burn banked. After sneaking that wing attack, it's going to be high extra drill by extra drill with Charizard sweeping yet another backline. GG's and thanks for playing. My god, is today's battle submission some fun? There are booms going off left, right, and centre. In the next battle, we see Altier in the lead. We save switch into Excadrill, drawing out the Quagman. The opponent chooses the shield up the drill run and then heavily over farm before firing off the Aquatel. Pyro just elects to let Excadrill go down. Aquatel, even to Flygon, will hit for neutral due to ground, taking super effective and dragon resisting. The super spammy Quagman going to be a huge core breaker for the team. Let's see how Pyro looks to play his way out of this one. You can see Quagsire already at the next Aquatel and we're going all in on a two shield Zard. I like that play but the issue is that Shadow Charizard insanely glassy and we're not going to appreciate this Dragon Breath damage. The opponent pivot back out into Altiri. You can see Dragon Claw especially not getting the same type of attack bonus isn't all that threatening the opponent. Tanks the first, shield the second, and Charizard is rapidly running out of HP. We are going to need something with pretty much non-existent fast move pressure in the back to win this game. Although I think even like a mud shot user would be too much for Charizard to handle. The opponent's actually got Stinky Binky and need I say any more other than let's move swiftly on. In the next battle, we see Flygon into Annihilate. If the opponent at least looks to bait, an Ice Punch, we are going to pace at the same speed, meaning we're going to land big damage or force ourselves early shield advantage. The opponent does play to the CMP tie, so this could potentially be a double super effective Ice Punch. The opponent fires off the Night Slash and then is going to get a very nice counter farm down, of course. We're going to send out Zard here. We see the instant shield deployed, blocking up the second Night Slash. We can then farm up, fire off the Dragon Claw on the CMP tie. Pyro actually opts. Just to get rid of it, not wanting the opponent to potentially pivot out, saving Annihilate. The opponent then sends out Pelipper. We're going to farm up, full send the Blast Burn. This is resisted, but Charizard doesn't give a shit about Typhon's Blast Burn. Actually forces the opponent's final Protect Shield, and we're going all in on Excadrill to sweep the back line. Weatherball, of course, would hit us for super effective, but likewise, a Rock Slide will pretty much one-shot with the wing attack damage Pelipper has already took. The opponent farms up, try the luck, making a catch onto Stinky Binky. Pyro's like, nah, nah, nah. Shows great composure, holds his energy, fires off the drill run. Drill run gets the opponent low. We then double up on charge moves. One drill run for this stupid butt plug and one rock side for the returning Pelipper. And this time, it's going to be extra drill, sweeping the back line. GG's and thanks for playing. Beautiful energy management there from Pyro, helping him pick up a very nice dub. In the next battle, we see another Steel Penguin. The last one didn't respect the damage. Let's see if this opponent does. We send the Scorching Sands. Scorching Sands again gets the no shield. Holy crap. Out comes Shadow Venusaur. Flygon still not done. Going to fire off the neutral Scorching Sands. Finally, the opponent invests the Protect Shield and play to CMP, which is best case scenario. Pyro says, Flygon, thank you very much for your contribution. Then sends out Charizard. We see yet another stupid butt plug in the back. Here comes Excadrill and this game is already signed, sealed and delivered. Excadrill, very advantageous in this matchup, especially with two Protect Shields to hide behind. We're going to respect the Moonblast. The opponent full sends. Excadrill might be glassy, but I imagine we would survive that. But regardless... We do invest that Protect Shield, get a massive mud shot farm down, leave at 100 energy. We fire off the drill run, the opponent recognise the game's over, tank the damage, and Exodus sweeps yet another back line. Heading into the next battle. We see Flygon into Tapu Fini, a matchup you might expect to see more often in the Fantasy Cup rather than the Open Great League. Pyro farms up, fires off the Scorching Sands. The opponent again doesn't respect the damage and it lands for heavy neutral damage. Flygon hits like a truck. The opponent full sends the Nature's Madness, securing the knockout. We send out Charizard. 
take quite a lot of water gun damage, but do get a nice farm down, and out comes Gligar. We full send the Blast Burn. Blast Burn does get shielded. Is Pyro going to shield in return or go all in on Excadrill? It looks like he's opting to shield, and I like this player, as I don't think they're quite in Shadow Rock Slide range yet. We again full send the Blast Burn. Blast Burn forces the opponent's final protection. We then see the pivot into Excadrill, and out comes the basic bitch tin can. The opponent's like, ooh, Excadrill, no thank you, concede the match, and we're going to take that game. Heading into the next battle, we see Shadow Flygon into the Silly Electric Fish. The opponent is on Spark, which has been nerfed, most are on Water Gun, but we're not complaining as these Sparks are triple resisted. We fire off the Scorching Sands, forcing us early shield advantage. This is such a dominant matchup for Flygon. The opponent fires off the Surf, then pivot into Annihilate, and we instantly respond with Charizard. We actually go straight Dragon Claw, so I imagine this gets no shield as the opponent knows it isn't a Blast Burn, but what do I know? The opponent opts to go all shields down. Pyro, gonna shield the Night Sash in return, then go straight for the next Dragon Claw. Dragon Claw, with the additional wing attacks, will be secure in the knockout. The opponent can look for the full Spark Farm down, but they're gonna be unable to get it before Zard reaches the Blast Burn. Once again, this is resisted, but it certainly will not look like it. Blast Burn lands for massive damage, leaving this silly electric fish into the red health range. Pyro sends back out Flygon. Flygon going to be operating as the damage sponge, something you won't hear all that often. We're now putting all our hopes and dreams on the back of Excadrill. Excadrill, of course, will have to shield up the incoming Surf. Show me something we can nuke in the back. Out comes Skarmory. Not something we can nuke. We can at least hit the neutral. The combination of ground and rock, very rarely resisted. Unfortunately, it looks like two rock sides aren't quite enough to knock out. Brave Bird, even though it is resisted, is going to knock us out and we're going to take a heartbreaking loss. GG's to that opponent. In the next battle, we see Flygon into the Kentucky Fried Chicken, Bird of Death. Usually not the best matchup. We have that surprise Hail Mary rock type coverage. Does the opponent respect the damage? Get that Talon Flame off my screen. Flygon claims another victim and out comes Ferrothorn. We see Pyro farm up, throw the Scorching Sands on the CMP site. Again, the opponent shows little respect and Ferrothorn is rocked down to around a third health. The opponent fires off the Power Whip, securing the knockout. We send out Charizard, the opponent pivots out into yet another Spark Lantern and we respond with Excadrill. As Pyro was pretty quick on the switch, this is definitely going to be a win for us in the two shield as we're straight fives to the drill run and the opponent is sixes to the surfs. We fire off the drill run, forcing the opponent's first protect shield. Pyro very happy to invest his final protect shield, blocking up the incoming surf. We've just got to be mindful the opponent might try and make a catch if their switch timer's up. We fire off the next drill run, forcing the opponent's final protect shield. Switch timer doesn't pop up. Exodrill is going to claim another victim. Back out comes Ferrothorn. The opponent recognises they have no win con and they're going to concede the match. GG's. In the next battle, we see some Shadow on Shadow Crime, Flygon into Skarmory. Again, a matchup where Stone Edge is going to be nice, as we can at least hit for neutral, but this is by no means a good matchup. Stone Edge actually gets respected. Of all the Pokemon to respect our rock type coverage, I wasn't expecting it to be Skarmory. Pyro happy to take shield advantage, then send out Charizard. Charizard is resisting the Steel Wings, but not going to appreciate the Sky Attack or Brave Bird as we are insanely glassy. The opponent full sends the Brave Bird, then pivot out into Gligar, and we are full sending the Blast Burn. Blast Burn! Oh, go shielded. We're temporarily denied of yet another big boom, but undeterred Pyro. Shields up the Aerial Ace, knowing he can farm up, throw the Blast Burn on the CMP tie, getting that boom, or we can actually catch an Aerial Ace onto Exodrill and bank all of our energy. I like that play a lot. The opponent is going to need to full send a dig to secure the knockout, so Pyro again maximizes energy, throws the Rock Slide on the CMP tie. Rock Slide isn't quite lethal, but this probably isn't the worst case scenario. Zard is just going to get even more farm. Back out comes Zard. Zard gets the wing attack farm down. Back out comes Skarmory. Skarmory going to be straight in and straight out. Show me something we can nuke in the back. Unfortunately, the opponent has Quagman. We're going to need to reach a Blast Burn and a Dragon Claw to win this battle. Oh, heartbreakingly, we're one quick move short and Zard just doesn't quite get the job done. GG's to that opponent. 
In the next battle, we see yet another silly electric fish. This one is on Water Gun, which is objectively worse, as Flygon takes neutral and our back to one takes super effective. We farm up far off the Scorching Sands, which does go shielded. Pyro gonna shield in return. We really need to remove this stupid electric fish from the field of play. The opponent actually gives up switch, sending out Gudra, which is another Pokemon that has water coverage. We shield up the Aquatel. Pyro gonna look to farm up to the double drill run. Pyro has shown cat like reflexes on his switches, so he should be able to reach two drill runs before the opponent reaches the next Aquatel. The first drill run did go shielded, the second drill run secures the knockout. Holy crap, Excadrill's damage output is absurd. However, we do get Water Gun farm down before reaching the next drill run. Pyro sends back out Flygon. We're able to reach the Scorching Sands. Scorching Sands gets that one hit KO. We pivot into Zard. Out comes Skarmory. Charizard is going to win the race. And you already know this is easily going to be enough to get that one hit KO. And we take yet another emphatic dub. Let's go. In the next battle, we see another Skarm in the lead. This time, we're actually opting to pivot instantly into Excadrill. The opponent stays in and make a savage rock slide catch. What a play catching onto the Quagman. Excadrill is going to be able to reach the draw on, which should force us shield advantage here in the mid game. Quagsire has been a huge headache for the team. Throughout this showcase, let's see if Pyro manages to get some redemption. The opponent heavily over farms before firing off the Aquatel. Shadow Quag is objectively worse as well as two Aquatels knock out Flygon. We're going to tank the first. Let's see if we shield the second. We're actually able to reach the Scorching Sands on the CMP time. We're going for a full undercharge. Pyro wants that farm. The opponent actually opt to invest the final Protect Shield. And we're going two shield Zard for the win. Let's go Zard. Let's go baby. Zard will be giving up that first Protect Shield. Blocking up the incoming Aquatel. We've also got to be mindful that Skarmory does have Energy Bank. The opponent pivots out into Gligar. Pyro farms up. Throws the Blast Burn on the CMP tie. Blast Burn hits like a truck, but unfortunately doesn't quite one shot. We see the correct play of no shield up the aerial aces. Skarmory, Sky Attack, or Brave Bird would hit harder. Zard able to get the wing attack farm down. The opponent sends back out Quagsire, hoping we instantly throw. We're like, nah, nah, nah. We hold our energy, leave with the Blast Burn, get that one hit KO, and Zard 1v freeze. In the next battle, we see a Zoomer in the lead. Despite Flygon being a dragon, this is definitely where the team wants to see it. We farm up, throw seven mud shots and the Scorching Sands for optimal fast move timing. And Scorching Sands lands for heavy damage. Flygon not messing around this thing, just hits like a truck. We shoot up the Ice Beam, Pyro, then going to farm up, throw the next Scorching Sands, looking to remove a Zoomer from the field of play. And we do exactly that. Out comes Sand Slash. Which happens to be yet another core break. Come on, trainer. It's only a dragon claw. Call the bait. Unfortunately, the opponent invests that protect shield. We get the attack drop and the opponent instant throw, which is kind of best case scenario all round. We send out Excadrill. The opponent over farms, allowing us to reach the drill run. Drill run goes unshielded. We are spamming the switch. Out comes Skeledurge, and we answer with Zard. Pyro, much like me, not a fan of baiting, opting to full send the Blast Burn. Blast Burn doesn't get respected. And holy, look at that for some resisted damage. Pyro then looks to call the bait like an absolute savage. He's able to wing attack, farm down and take that game. Nicely done. In the next battle, we see Annihilate in the lead. We've seen this one play out. If the opponent builds up to an Ice Punch, which they do, we're going to be able to win the Charge Attack Priority event. Scorching Sands this time doesn't get respected and lands for huge damage, leaving Annihilate into the red health range. The opponent then pivots out into Mantine and we respond with Excadrill. Our Steel Mole is able to reach a Rock Slide before the opponent potentially reach a Water Pulse. I think Water Pulse is the preferred move since it got buffed a few seasons ago. We're not interested in shielding Excadrill. We actually dare the opponent to full send the water pulse. They settle for the aerial ace. They then throw yet another aerial ace. Exodrill had the rock slide bank. I think we intentionally didn't throw there as we want farm on Zard. Zard comes in, looks for the wing attack farm down. Unfortunately, we're unable to get it before this ever annoying flying pest reaches the departing aerial ace. Zard gives up that protect shield in exchange for a boatload of energy. Out comes Sand Slash. The opponent makes a very nice catch. Catching the Blast Burn back onto the low health ape. 
I think that might be a game-winning catch from the opponent, as they've got two protect shields, two high behind. I think we're very much reliant on the opponent looking to call a bait. Pyro, undeterred, going to full send, daring the opponent to find their lose con. The opponent correctly shields up the blast burn. We then make a savage catch of our own onto Flygon, but I think it's going to be too little, too late. Pyro again, full sending, hoping the opponent looks to shield flex. They're like, nah, 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 not today, trainer. Shield up the blast burn, reach the ice punch, and they're able to pick up the dub. Nicely played from the opponent. GG's. In the next battle, we see our nemesis, the Kentucky Fried Chicken, Bird of Death. Please tell me they don't respect the damage. I'd like nothing more than one more Stone Edge boom. Stone Edge! No! Go shielded. Oh man, that's heartbreaking. The opponent actually fired off the flame charge though, which is a huge mistake, as we would be able to reach one further Stone Edge before getting incinerated farm down Pyro. Actually, Ops the shield, looking to force the final protection of the opponent. Save Talon Flame, pivot out into the Quagman. We fire off the Scorching Suns, then pivot out into Charizard. It looks like the opponent doesn't have Aquatel, as they're farming up to a potential Stone Edge. Charizard able to fire off the Dragon Claw, securing the knockout, and out comes King Cray Dilly. You know what time it is, hashtag no baits on this channel, Blast Burn! Ah. Oh. Go shielded. The opponent has invested two huge protect shields in this battle. We're now opting to save our final protect shield for Excadrill. We see Pyro wait how he switch timer, giving himself the opportunity to make a catch. We're gonna have to shield up the neutral Grass Knot as Grass Knot would do a lot of damage. Pyro then over farms before firing off the drill run. Drill run, we'll be getting that one hit KO back out. Comes Talonflame, we're able to survive the incinerate, reach the rock side, and finally gonna get that big boom, removing Talonflame from the field of play. GG's, and thanks for playing. Same lead in the next battle, but hopefully with a different outcome. Again, we full send the Stone Edge, does the opponent respect the damage? They do not get that Talonflame off my screen. The opponent's like, fuck this game. Concede the match, probably uninstall, never to play again, and we're going to move on to the next one. We see another flying fire type in the lead, but this one is objectively worse for us, unless you can make a very nice Dragon Claw catch onto Excadrill. Dragon Claw didn't look all that resisted. The opponent then rebanks the Dragon Claw before sending out the mighty Blue Mouse, the ever annoying Azam Bomberill. Shout out Shrady for that one. Drill run lands for heavy neutral damage. The opponent looking for that bubble farm down, but Exadrill able to reach the next drill run, which unfortunately isn't lethal, but does leave him deep in the red. Neither our Pokemon particularly want to tank a charge move from a Zoom Roll. This isn't enough for a Hydro Pump. The opponent actually don't have Ice Beam. Okay, that's advantageous, although that play rough did do a lot of damage. The opponent sends back out their own Zard. They fire off the Dragon Claw, which does secure the knockout. We send out Flygon, and I think I'll win con if the opponent not shielding Zard. Please, trainer! Stone Edge does actually get that boom! Holy crap! Out comes Empoleon. Please, trainer. Please let it go. Scorching Sands forced the Protect Shield. Unfortunately, we're going to get Steel Wing farm down. Pyro recognises there's no win in this game. Ops to tank the move. Hydro Cannon secures the knockout. And we are going to take a loss. But what a boom there on the Mighty Zard. What a battle submission. Huge shout out to Pyro. That was a whole heap of fun with all three Pokemon pulling their weight. I think Flygon was without a doubt the star of the show though. Them Stone Edge surprise nukes were so satisfying. So if you're enjoying the content, smash that like button if you're new. Consider subscribing if you'd like your battles. Like Pyro featured on my channel, a link to a battle submission is down below. And as always, a huge thank you to everyone for watching. And I'll see you all in the next one.